good. I'm glad it looked as smooth and graceful yeah. as it did. It felt like a little tornado. I didn't even think about the spotting. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Oh, you do? I know what spotting is. Like when you're turning, you whip your head around. Come to... on! Obviously. Like, obviously! <laughs> It's way more intense than I thought. Yeah. Like, the schedule, no days off, work, home, yeah. work, home. I don't think this is gonna work mm -hmm. anymore. Did you do karate? This thing was a bow stop and he can like spin Come things on, and like- yes! <laughs> We can grab brooms. Can we Instacart like nunchucks? <laughs> she can't afford a black eye. Okay, I did Taekwondo when you I did? was young. I got my black belt. You got your black belt? <laughs> Holy crap. Loved it. I'm not even really big on the social medias. The way I said that was really <laughs> exposing of that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take my Gen Z card away. I wonder if people, and this is not a question for you, get paired together and they just can't stand each other. Let's talk about it. It does? <laughs> I'll okay. say that. Chandler, welcome to the squeeze. Thank Woo! you. I'm so excited to be here. Even though I just said that we've literally been talking for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretending like we haven't been talking. Now we're rolling. <laughs> now we're going. Um, okay, great. So we start each episode off with this jar, a little game called Citrus Got Real. Ooh. If you want to pull a little piece, yeah. If you want to pull a little piece of paper out of there. Um, okay. And... Go for it. Yeah, go yeah. for it. Um, I love some good wordplay. To... So that was fun. I don't know if. Oh, got it. Yes. Citrus got yes. real. I realized that's what you were referring to. <laughs> okay. When you open a straw, do you poke slash stab or peel slash tear the wrapper? This is a beautiful question. These are the questions <laughs> that keep me up at night. Do I poke slash stab or peel I think I'm a peeler. Are you a peeler? I think I am. Yeah. Because you know what? I think I am a recovering mm -hmm. poker. Yep. yep. Because you guys know. Yeah. Because if you go for like the straw yep. snaps, yeah. I've had that one too many yeah. times. And then, and then you, then you have a hole, a hole in, in your, your straw. straw. Yeah. I know. That's a day. You're not runner. sipping any of that lemonade. Yeah. No. So I, I, I'm now like, I'm moving into the peeling era yeah. of my life. Yeah. My I feel like as you mature. It's a maturity yeah. thing. Yeah. Yes. I do feel like when I see people do that, I'm like, but I why? still do though. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely know. still do. Oh, it, oh, you get the ick from it. A little bit. Oh. I should save that. I should put I was... that in here for later. <laughs> yeah. This is foreshadowing everyone. Uh oh, uh, for what we're going to do later in the, in the episode. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So noted. I'll stop poking It doesn't give straw. me the ick. It's more like, what are you doing? You're going to break the straw. And then I'm going to have to be the one that has to fix the problem of the right. straw. So it's mm. either I'm giving you my straw or. Okay. Yeah. It becomes like a whole conundrum. Yeah. Yeah. Who makes these questions up? Our lemon drops. Wow. That was a good one. I know. We put a little, our lemon drops are our listeners. Um, <gasps> we put like, we have a little question box on our Instagram. If you don't follow us at the squeeze on Instagram. Um, and yeah, we put like a little thing. That's so like, how do you think of that? I know. So creative. It was really that impressive. That was very specific. Yeah. And I, I enjoy like the specificity of that question. Yeah. So thank you, Lemon Drop. Whoever, <laughs> whoever <laughs> that you are, is. show yourself in the comments below. <laughs> yeah, that really did do something um, for my for my soul. I enjoyed that question. Yeah. Um, okay, so we are filming this the morning after the Halloween episode. Yes. yes. Just for clarity, because I know this will technically come out. You're watching this at home not after, after next week's episode yeah a yeah. week after so yeah. we everything but we're a, we're a week behind right yeah, now we went back in time and that's what we're um doing today and mm -hmm. last night in our time chandler absolutely smashed yeah. her really? halloween episode dance <laughs> yeah no Thank you literally you. finished your dance and i looked at taylor and i was like oh that was her best one yet like easily yeah, you did you thank did. you which i thank <laughs> you <laughs> which i was like that's that's high praise because like the bar is set so high for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think everybody knows that, yeah. but yeah, you, you were like, that was her best one yet. I was yeah. like, you might be right, but she's just so good every week. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to say. No, I, I really felt like it was like, I don't know. It just like, there wasn't any moment where there was like a stutter or it just like mm. felt like it literally just like float the whole time. Like Thank it was you. Really nice. Thank you for saying that. I was, uh, I was really nervous because it, it was a Viennese waltz and I think that's a risky dance to do on Halloween night because it's, you know, typically the 
the showy, flashy night yeah. where everybody pulls out all the stops and you yeah. see the big lifts and the tricks. And and they're amazing. It was an incredible episode. I had so much fun watching from the skybox. Um, but, you know, the waltz, it can be, it can appear very simple. You know, it's yeah. really just like fluid and you glide across the floor, but, you know, it's a no lift genre or style of mm. dance. And um, there are only so many steps. Yeah. It's just very technical. And so mm. um, Brandon and I just really wanted to build it and like, dive deep into character and storytelling and which added a lot of anxiety to me because there are so many like added elements like yeah. just starting on the music box and like rotating and then falling off of that which was a much higher fall than it probably looked yeah. um and then i had my little like glass shard oh, and i had yeah. a tiny oh, little pocket i got so I got worried i got so yeah. worried when you went to put it in the thing i was like what if she yeah. can't find yeah, that in the moment the panic in my eye I was, <laughs> I like, know. I, I, my heart like stopped when I saw you going to put it in, and I was like, "Oh no!" And then I was like, "And then this is just my OCD. It's like, what if it falls out?" Like, oh well, I was God. literally yeah. thinking about that. So, I mean, I can only imagine what you were thinking. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you. Literally the day before, I was like readjusting the um the glass glass shard size because that was the first time I actually ever got to like work with it. Yeah. The day before, wow. and then also the pocket. Like I had them make three different adjustments to the pocket. Yeah. Like just the length of it and like I had them straighten it out ever so slightly because it kept getting um you know the the shard was Oof. it was like spiky it was yeah. a little sharp on the end so it was like getting caught on the mesh Oof. and there was one time during camera blocking where I didn't get it in the pocket the entire like the, the whole way and it flew out halfway through the dance and so I was Oof. spinning I was schwitzing I was sweating <laughs> I was so scared um but yeah you probably saw me give it like an extra little shove yeah make sure um, it stays yeah, there. it stayed in. We oh. got through the dance. Hallelujah. It worked. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> so funny. We didn't talk about that. We I didn't. <laughs> but I was like, that that was risky. I guess you made me like, forget it was risky. that part. Because the dance was so nice. You made me forget okay, that I was anxious for you yeah. about that the whole time. Yeah, yeah that's so funny. I uh, actually was thinking it when they were showing like you guys practicing. My brain was like, oh, where is this gonna be? Like, where is it gonna, gonna go? go? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Before you even like started like the dance. Part when you guys were just in rehearsal, yeah. I was like, where is this going to go? How is this going to yeah. be attached to her body? Yeah. And then the fact that you needed it for that moment at the end, you can't just lose it during the dance. Well, like, well, it comes out, it goes back in and then it comes out again. So even getting it out, coming out of those, oops, going out of those, um, they call them fleckle rolls. Oh. Um, so that was that last step that we were going like spinning around in a circle yeah. okay. um, where it's a lot of momentum. So I'm, you know, and also in frame, you're holding your head like, like like this yeah so you can't spot so you get really dizzy mm. so then i had to find the front in my dizzy state find my pocket with that bad boy out and then turn around and find brandon so it was i'm glad it looked as smooth and yeah. graceful as it did it yeah. felt tumultuous it felt like <laughs> a little tornado so yeah. it was beautiful uh, i was really proud of it i didn't mm. even like think about like the spotting of all of the yep. spinning and stuff do you know what that is what spotting, spotting yeah. yeah oh you do I know what spotting is. Like when you're turning? Yeah, like when you're turning, you whip your head around. Come to... on! Obviously. Let's go. But I have always wondered <laughs> Obviously. why. Obviously. <laughs> but I have wondered why um, why when doing some of those dances, your neck looks like it's broken because you're, you're mm -hmm. right that like you're, I've always wondered why That's just, you have to do that. Right, I don't That's know. That's just like. It's part the, of the frame. Okay. Yeah. But it is, it's like you're typically. I think at least for the woman, like over the left, over I'll just speak to the mic, over the left, and then the chin is up. So it's like, that, yeah, you do feel like a crane. In your yeah, neck. It, it doesn't does. look comfortable. It's not, it's not. I have had um, a couple of PT sessions because you kind of get lopsided just by holding the frame for so long. Jeez, oh, yeah. Geez. Wow. It's intense. Props to you for freaking doing that. Thank you. Um, how, how are you feeling this morning? week life in general how is how's your mental health how are you feeling how's how's the day going i feel okay and that's, that's great that's great yeah <laughs> i will take i'll that. take it <laughs> yeah i think um you know especially being in the midst of dancing with the stars which is just such an intense show with um an insane pace yeah genuinely like we were just talking about this i've not had a day off and so i'm not even used to being like on the road that much like driving every day and like being on camera every day and always having something to say every day like sometimes you know yeah. i have days where i'm just like yeah 
I have nothing to add to the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just like need to kind of be in my own world. Um, this is just not an environment that's conducive to that. Um, so it's just, it's been a big learning curve and I feel um, drained is too strong of a word, but I am like a little sleepy, a yeah. little like feeling the wear of the competition at this point going into week eight. Um, wow. Yeah. Is it week eight already? I know. It's like Dang. flown by, but um, genu generally, like I, I feel all right. I'm hanging in. I'm yeah. hanging in. <laughs> You're crushing it. Yeah. Thank you. Really thank are. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You really are. Um, we can get into. Dancing we'll get into stars. more dancing with the stars later because yeah. Yeah. we're you know fans and gonna have <laughs> questions but yeah. um Me. i'm holding myself back <laughs> <laughs> i know we already got into a little more there than i was anticipating but, <laughs> That's fine. Um, we'll circle back we'll circle back yeah. so going back in time mm -hmm. i'm curious when did you start acting mm. how did you start acting yeah. like what did that look like for you coming from a fellow um child actor yes um well i so I did start in dance, in the dance world. I was kind of like a competitive dancer, girly growing up. And then when I was nine years old, I ended up doing a Gap commercial okay. randomly um, that kind of had a viral moment for 2009. Um, and that like sideways threw me into the world of acting. And I ended up signing with a commercial agent. And then suddenly I'm like, walking walking into these audition spaces and being handed like sides yeah. with dialogue and I'm like I've never yeah. done this before and so then I started taking acting classes so I was 9 years old okay um and that kind of began my transition out of the dance world into acting like full time and um and yeah it was really like a slow burn for me. Like I really started kind of like in the guest star world and then reoccurring. And then I got my first series regular role. And, um, but that's been the last like 15 years of my life and it's just snowballed in a really beautiful way. And, um, I've loved it. It's just been, it's been very, as you know, like it's a very specific experience. Yeah. Um, but it's been amazing. I've, I've been very fortunate to have like overall a positive experience coming out of like that very specific time yeah you yeah know? that's good to hear because i feel like people either have like they're like yeah i look back on that time and like i it's it was positive yeah. or people are like no it ruined my life <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah we've it's like one or the both. other yeah a hundred percent well you're so young and impressionable and i think specifically about being a child actor, you know what you do before you know who you are. And that's such a weird uh, complex, yeah. you know? And so you're kind of like a young mind that's like so malleable and, but you don't have a strong sense of self. Yeah. And yeah. then you're spending so much time as other people <laughs> do. Yeah. And it's so, it almost like delays that process. Um, not only just like the nature of the job, but also like the demands on you as a person and your schedule and like time and everything, it delays that process of like, at least it kind of did for me of, of finding that sense of self. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you go to, did you go to like regular school or was it like, I was kind of pulled out of regular school, like end of elementary, like going into middle school, I started like the homeschool, homeschool. thing and okay. high school was like all independent study. I like, yeah did a specific program that is for young kids that are working professionally in their field. So like there yeah. was everyone from like the child actors of like a Zendaya, like went to the same school also like a Gabby Douglas, you know, who's like Olympian yeah. queen. Oh, wow. um, so it was just, you still, we still got like a good education, um, but just with more like leniency with like hours and yeah. demands of actually having to be in like a, academic space like with a teacher but you still had to go in and like yeah yeah that's what i needed i had some school teachers that got very upset at me and my parents for like having to you yeah. know miss some time yeah that yeah did you have like set teacher stories <laughs> um i yeah but these were like my public school teachers they got would it. throw a fit to my parents you literally yeah. didn't leave public school until after twilight came out it like was wow like, wow i mean you can tell your story i don't need to tell it for you <laughs> no yeah it the first one came out and i was still in high school 
I was in 10th grade, I can't which imagine. became bizarre because then I would be in like, you know, science, biology, and I would just like see like two kids like turning their phones yeah. back at me and like recording me in the classroom. I was like, I oh. don't think this is going to work mm, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I had I had teachers that would because I also I did martial arts was like my life before yeah. acting. And so I would miss like once a month, I had to go to a karate tournament in yeah. a different area of the country. And my teachers would get so upset with my parents and be yeah. like, he cannot be missing this much time. So I could have used that program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were here. You could have had it. Now we know. Yeah. Well, that time I was still in Michigan for all the martial arts. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Did but you do true. other, did you do karate in any, I did taekwondo when you I did? was younger. Yeah. Oh, wow. I um I got my black belt. Wow. I wanted to go. I wanted it was like one of my best friends. Actually, a few of my like really close friends all are like deep into that world because uh, that was just like my that was actually part of my high school experience before I transitioned into um that like the actual <laughs> the actual school. Yeah. I was online um in the learning center of my martial arts academy. What? <laughs> Yeah, it was a Taekwondo studio. You got your black belt? <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Wow. Yeah. I think my mom just like, as I have two older brothers and like as the youngest of three, the only girl, she was like, you're going to learn self-defense yeah. at a really young age. And so, wow. yeah, but I wanted to go for my second degree. I was like really deep into it. Um, then I was practicing double nunchucks and I gave myself a black eye and Oof. I had to film the next week and she was like, okay, so you have to pick one. <laughs> you get one <laughs> and, and I picked acting. So. so funny. Probably the right choice. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah. Rick, we should, I, do you have these things? Um, he do I have do, what? He, his thing was a bow staff and he can like spin on, things and like yes. put things. We need to we get, can, we can grab a broomstick. Can we Instacart like... <laughs> Nunchuck some from somewhere. No, no. <laughs> from the locals. She's in the middle of filming Dance with the Stars right now. She can't afford a black eye. Okay, true. Fair enough. Gut tells me she might be a little rusty on the nunchucks. Yeah, pro- you're right about that. You're right about hey, that. It's been a minute. Never say never. Say never. I, I don't want to doubt you, but. That's amazing. Between office parties and family get togethers, do you feel more bloated around the holidays? And are you looking for a way to get ahead of the bloat? Well, have I got just the product for you. It is Seeds DSO1, one of my absolute favorites on the market to ever exist. DSO1 is formulated with 24 clinically and scientifically studied strains to support whole body benefits, including gut health, skin health, heart health, immune health, gut barrier integrity, gut microbial balance, and micronutrient synthesis all in two capsules a day. If you guys are new here, then You've been missing out on me talking about this for literally years. I have been taking Seeds DSO-1 for so long and the change that I've seen in my gut is truly just amazing and it's the reason why I continue to sing it from the mountaintops how much I love this product because it truly has made such a difference in my gut health. I just want everyone to experience the freedom that I've truly experienced. Seeds DSO-1 is truly so easy to incorporate in your routine. I have my jar sitting right by my coffee pot. So every morning I take two pills out and just take them with my coffee. It's something that is so easy to incorporate into your routine just by having it by something that you already have incorporated into your routine. Get ahead of the new year with a routine that helps you now by going to seed.com slash the squeeze and use code 25 the squeeze to get 25% off your first month. That's 25% off your first month of Seeds DSO1 Daily Symbiotic at seed.com slash the squeeze code 25 the squeeze. Do you like free stuff? Well, you're in luck because Buy Optimizer's Black Friday deal starts now and they're giving away free gifts with purchase. That's right, I have an exclusive advance invite to buy Optimizer's Black Friday deal for the entire month of November. This is their best sale of the entire year. If you're feeling stressed out or haven't been sleeping well lately, you're not alone. You might not be able to change all the chaos out there, but you can start supplementing with one key nutrient to improve your sleep quality as well as over 600 other biochemical reactions in your body. 
Magnesium Breakthrough is the only product I've found that has all the magnesium forms in one convenient bottle. You'll open less bottles, spend less money, and still get the top seven forms of magnesium for better sleep, manage stress, balance hormones, improve mood, feel refreshed, all in one bottle. When you get all seven critical forms of magnesium, pretty much every function in your body gets upgraded. Right now for the entire month of November, by Optimizers, the makers of Magnesium Breakthrough, are having a Black Friday blowout sale on all of their products. All month long, you will get discounts with my unique code plus access to $100 in free gifts with purchase. This is the best time to stock up and take advantage of all the free extras you are going to get. You can get this exclusive deal through my link special for my audience, you lemon drops. You won't find this on Amazon or even on the company website. Go to buyoptimizers.com slash squeeze and use code squeeze to get your discount and free gifts today. And one last thing you should know, all Buy Optimizer supplements are best in class. If for some reason you feel differently, you can get a full refund up to a year after your purchase. No questions asked. Again, the link you can go to right now for this exclusive deal is buyoptimizers.com slash squeeze and use code squeeze. You know the saying, when life gives you lemons, we talk about it here on The Squeeze all the time. And today I want to share something that's been a game changer in my routine, especially on those days where I've got a mile long to-do list and need to stay sharp. Let me introduce you to Roots Focus, the plant-based vegan-friendly powder designed to enhance mental clarity and support cognitive function, allowing you to maintain sharp focus throughout the day. It has a subtle 56 milligrams of caffeine and a two gram dose of synergistic four mushroom blend per serving, delivering smooth, long lasting energy without the jittery spikes or crashes. Get 25% off Roots Focus on Amazon with code SQUEEZE. That's SQUEEZE for 25% off on Amazon. It's been a huge help when I feel like I had to stay on track without feeling overstimulated. And with flavors like fruit punch, spicy pineapple, black lavender lemonade, and strawberry watermelon, It's like a tasty little boost for my brain. I love the blackberry lavender lemonade. Anything lavender, so good. If you're ready to elevate your focus, get 25% off plus free shipping on Roots Focus at drinkroots.com with code squeeze. Visit drinkroots.com for details. Again, that's code squeeze for 25% off plus free shipping on Roots Focus at drinkroots.com. Visit drinkroots.com for details. Trust me, your mind will thank you later. Um, so before zombies, had you like sang and done like singing roles before? Let's talk about it. Okay. Hmm. No. Wow. I had not. And I was terrified. Oh genuinely. Wow. I was convinced that I could not sing, that I could not hold a tune, that I was like tone deaf. I should never like open my mouth. I oh was my gosh. And that really just like speaks to like the insecurities in our heads and how they can grow and like spin out of control. Cause I genuinely just from like small minuscule experiences that I had from my childhood that just stuck with me, you know, and they kind of just ingrained in like my brain and told myself, you know, that that was a no go for me. And so that was actually part of the reason why I wanted to do the zombies movies. Mm. Um, I just knew that that was the whole singing element was a big mental block for me. And, um, you know, I knew that I wanted to run towards that fear and not away from it. So I decided that's what I needed to do. And I got over that mental hurdle, but it was really hard. It paid off. It was really hard. I remember recording my first song. It was a song called flesh and bone which is insane to me now because you can go on YouTube. It has like over a hundred million views. It has so many views. It's insane. I was looking at some of the stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. The kiddos love the music and I get it. It's catchy. Um, I remember going in. That was my first song I ever recorded for the Zombies franchise. And I thought that I just like botched it. Mm. And I remember being like, thank you so much. And going into the studio bathroom and just sobbing I like locked myself in the stall and just like let it all out I thought it was horrible I thought I was gonna get fired I don't know (laughs) I was just it's like the narratives that you tell yourself you know and then I came out wiped my tears and then was like thank you so much again (laughs) (laughs) and left yeah um yeah it's it it was a big thing for me a big insecurity 
Yeah. How are how are you with that now after doing a couple? Do you feel better about it or do you still kind of feel like an imposter syndrome with it? Yeah, definitely a little bit of imposter syndrome um, that I'm still overcoming and that's just in everything. Um, but I do feel a little bit more comfortable. You know, I think um, just even being in the space of a studio and like being behind a mic and listening to my voice back, like those are all baby steps that I've learned to yeah. – like acknowledge and then also like let those be victories, you know, like yeah. now when I go into the studio and like, if I can block out the negative voices, I'm like, okay, that was a win, you know? And, and so it, it really is a process, but it's been three movies now and yeah. a whole animated series that I'm still Jeez. something that I like feel a little bit in my body when wow. I walk in. Yeah. Has been, overly critical on yourself been a thing for you like since you were <laughs> yes. yeah that's yeah that runs in you yeah I don't even know where it came from um it, it's totally self-inflicted um I think I've just always been a very goal-oriented person yeah. um yeah I would love to know where perfectionism comes from because yeah. I it wasn't something that even came from my parents it was just like I am naturally very like high achieving and I have very high standards for myself. And then I get really disappointed when I don't meet those standards. Um, and it's something that I really have had to address because oh, it's like yeah. a setup for failure because perfection doesn't exist, you know? And I think being under the illusion that it does is, is the failure, you know, like yeah. I think, um, so I've had to learn and like trusting the process and like, taking the victories when they come, like being able to identify them and then actually like celebrate those. Um, but it's, it's definitely a process and still something that I struggle with. Yeah. 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 I feel like the, um, your career path is a little, um, difficult to have, like having that mentality. Um, how do you, <laughs> he's like, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. how do you Preach. feel like you balance that? Because I just like, I couldn't imagine like going through what, like, you know, all of the audition processes and all of the no's and just like all of those things. How do you feel like you've been able to like still balance mm. the perfectionist mentality and still have a love for what you do? That's a great question. <laughs> and I don't know if I have the answer. Yeah. Um, That's okay I too, definitely don't have the answer, but um, I think I love being an artist um, I have a very creative mind. Uh, I get to tell stories for a living and like, that's such a gift. And I think no piece of art is perfect. I think no story is perfect. And so just getting to operate in that space, like is a constant reminder for me yeah. uh, of that. Um, I think, and I, I think, you know, times where I'm on set, where I go for what I perceive is like the perfect take like when if I if I go in and I do exactly what I want to do it ends up usually not being the best take you mm -hmm. know like I try to never be result oriented especially as an actor like you just kind of want to be in the nature of the circumstance of the character and and that's never going to look perfect <laughs> because people aren't perfect and yeah. so that's a way that I use my craft to like help with that mm you know, inclination to go for the, the, the perfection yeah. thing. But, um, but it's hard. I mean, that it's just a constant like battle, I think with myself, but I, yeah. I don't know the answer. Yeah. 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 I'm sure there's like a healthy part in there that still like keeps you motivated to. Yeah. Like, yeah. Keep working to like mm -hmm. keep going. I think also too, you know, at the end of the day, especially I could just speak from like what I do. Like I want people to resonate with whatever I put out into the world, whatever, you know, form media that takes. Yeah. And I think people resonate with the journey. They resonate with the struggle, the ups and the downs. And so that's how I maintain my love of it because I think that is really what it's all about. Not just like the win or the 10 or the, ideal version of it um mm. I think like anytime I sit and like really look back and reflect on my journey like you can't have the rainbow without the rain you know and yeah. so you have to learn to 
appreciate every part of the process. You don't have to love it. <laughs> you yeah, definitely yeah. won't. Yeah. But um, but also I think there's recognition in understanding the importance of it and the yeah. why it's necessary to the overall journey. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's great. That was very I I think you know the answer. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you answered it in there. <laughs> well, saying it is one thing, yeah. applying it is another. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. But uh, yeah, it's a journey. <laughs> um I want to talk about PLL for um, a little bit. Let's did you watch? Did you watch the show? Like, like the OG? Uh, yeah, the yes. original one. Okay. Yeah, oh I gosh. did. I was, um, I was probably like 13, 14. Yeah. So I, it was my first like YA show that yeah, I ever totally. watched. And it felt so like risque and yeah. like mature. I was, I was talking about this with someone the other day. Like, we would have my girlfriends and I like after dance, we would all like go over to someone's house yeah. and like watch it. Yeah. It came out like every Tuesday or something like mm-hmm. that. We would go, go to Whole Foods, pick up like pizza. And then ah. we go to someone's house and watch. And looking back, I'm like, how, how was this a YA show? First of all, but like, <laughs> was it a little raunchy? Yeah, it was like Lucy Hale's character literally was like dating her teacher. Yeah. Like people were like, it, it there was just a lot. There was a lot. And a it was like things. a different time, like early 2000s. And so I think the show really did like write that storyline in particular to where people were rooting for it. But then you look back at it, back at it and you're like, that was. Oh, I definitely was. I mean, was like, my yeah. brain is a 16 year old. You're rooting time to, for that Yeah, I liked, I liked them. He was cute and she was cute and I liked them. Huh. I didn't like think that that was a But I mean, thing. to be fair, the show was written yeah. for you to like them. Like yeah. they wanted viewers to ship those two characters. Got it. Yeah. Um, but then you look back and you're like, that's really problematic. Huh. <laughs> and also just like scary. My girlfriend rewatched it recently and she was like, this is like, I'm scared rewatching like, this. Like where are her parents? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are they doing? Why, why did we watch this? And we were like, oh, like this is fun. Like she was like, I'm actually scared right now. Watching yeah. This. Yeah. That's the real horror yeah. of the story. Yeah. Huh. Um, oh, and funny. I know that um, your spinoff of it definitely still like is very heavy. Yeah. Of a show. Um, Heavier in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. How has that experience been like? filming that and having to like be in such heavy roles? Great question. It was really, really hard. It was really hard. And I've actually never really spoken about this openly, but it was like a dark time Mm. for all of us um, in a lot of ways. Mm. Uh, We loved the show so much. and We loved the girls that we were portraying so much, Um, but it was just really heavy material that we were dealing with. Um, and I think we would all go back and do it a hundred times over because I think the result was worth it. And I think the whole point of the show at its core was to reach people that felt isolated by their experiences and remind them that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that we achieved that and I'm really proud of that. The process of creating that though, and telling those stories just, I think really took a toll um, a few things. We were filmed in upstate New York where there's like nothing but mountains. Mm. Um, beautiful, but like in the dead of winter, wow. the sun just did not shine in that wow. part yeah. of the, the state. And so there was like very little vitamin D for us girlies. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, very few like days off. And, um, and we really just like leaned on each other, you know, through that time. I uh, played an assault survivor and that was, you know, a story that I wanted to do justice. I wanted um, to portray it in a way that felt real and grounded and um, not glossing over, I think, like what had happened to her and um, because it's not a story that should be glossed over, you know, yeah. and, um, and I really try to put myself as much in her shoes and in her heart as I could. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was, it was heavy for sure. Yeah. That time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I can only imagine. When did you film that? So that was, um, that was starting in the summer of 2021. Okay. And it went, <laughs> 
<laughs> April of 2022. It was a long, wow. long shoot. Wait, you were shooting that whole time? Episodes. Wait, 10 episodes? Wait. Why the heck did it take that long? Know. The heck? That was part of it as well. So what kind was, of budget <laughs> is this? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't think people realize like what happened to that. It was a long time to be filming a 10 episode. You literally filmed that whole time. Yeah, we had like a month hiatus and then okay. there was the holidays. Um, it was the process was majorly delayed because of COVID. Okay. So there was a time where we we all ended up getting COVID at one point or so another and like we stop. were just, oh. yeah, we were, but we did not shut down um, because they just kept us on rotation. Got like it. truly there were times where some of us were quarantined. There was a time where I was the only one that had not caught it. And I remember having a, a conversation with the producer basically saying like, hey, so, you know, we're only in production because of you right now. So just be really safe. Yeah. So I was like not going, that was another reason why I was not going outside. Yeah. I was like being the utmost careful and cautious and like only ever, like I wouldn't go sit in restaurants. I wouldn't yeah. go socialize. I was just work home, work yeah. home. And that I think exacerbated like the whole situation in terms of like my mental health. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was a shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Gosh. But we were so grateful to have our second season. It kind of felt like a redemption arc for all of us because it was a summer set season. So yeah. we filmed it like only like spring through the end of summer. It was two less episodes and we were able to like zip through it because COVID kind of had calmed down a bit. Um, so yeah, it was it was a little bit more, there was like more levity, I think, throughout that season. It was brighter, literally physically just watching the show. Yeah. Yeah. And then also just like with the content. But yeah. um but yeah, I think um, I'm proud of it. It just, um, yeah, it was a lot on all of us. Yeah. yeah. So we all know the brand Gatorade. If you don't, then you've been living under a rock. And welcome. There is a brand called Gatorade that makes um, great drinks for hydration. A lot of sports athletes drink their drinks. But what is important to remember is that hydration is for everyone. We all need water to survive. We all need electrolytes. And Gatorade has these little hydration booster packets that I recently learned about, and they are my favorite. This is their Gatorade hydration boosters. They have electrolyte levels suitable for all day, always on hydration so that you can enjoy this product throughout the day. It has advanced blend of electrolytes from watermelon, sea salt, and other sodium potassium salts. Gatorade hydration booster contains 30 calories and five grams of sugar versus liquid IV, which contains 45 calories and 11 grams of sugar. I don't know about you, but when I'm trying to stay hydrated in my day-to-day -day life, I don't want a product that has a lot of sodium in it. One, because I don't want to be putting that much sodium into my body, but also I just don't like the taste of electrolytes that have too much sodium in it. Not my cup of tea, not my favorite, but these hydration boosters have truly been my favorite little go-to. This is the strawberry watermelon. This one is my absolute favorite. There's these great little packets. You just add it to 20 fluid ounces of water, and then you're going to stay hydrated throughout your day. So put your water to work with Gatorade Hydration Booster. You can use code BOOST20 on Gatorade.com to try it for yourself for 20% off. You guys have to try the strawberry watermelon because it's my favorite. Who doesn't love one last thing to think about, especially when it comes to working out? That's what's so great about Tonal. From picking the perfect weight to tracking your progress to suggesting what to do next based on your muscle readiness, Tonal takes the guesswork out of getting a great workout in. Tonal is truly the world's smartest workout. They've revolutionized the approach to strength training by blending cutting edge technology with exercise science to deliver the most efficient workouts. Tonal learns from your movement and sets the optimal weight with every move to keep you challenged throughout your workout. They automatically track your progress and suggest program and workout recommendations based on your goal. Tonal brings the effectiveness of having a personal trainer in your home. It adapts and it learns to you, giving you coaching cues to keep you working out safely and efficiently. I first tried a Tonal out at our trainer's gym and it's truly one of the coolest machines I have ever used before. And we recently got one installed in our home. 
And I can't tell you how excited I am to have this in our house and finally use it. It's just so cool how smart this machine is and how effective it is at coaching you through workouts. And if you guys like haven't heard of it, you need to check out the Tonal because it is just absolutely amazing. And right now, Tonal is offering our listeners $200 off your Tonal purchase with promo code SQUEEZE. That's Tonal.com and use promo code SQUEEZE for $200 off your purchase. That's Tonal.com, promo code SQUEEZE for $200 off. All right, let's talk about something that can really put a squeeze on your mental health during the holidays. Ha ha. Yep, I had, to, I had to say it. I couldn't pass it up. Those never-ending to-do lists. Between finding the perfect gifts, decorating the house, and planning holiday gatherings, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. And one thing that always used to stress me out is holiday cards. But this year, we decided to make things easier on ourselves. We went with Minted. And let me tell you, it was a game changer. They have this incredible selection of design forward stationery, all created by independent artists from around the world. Not only do designs look amazing, but the process is super simple and stress-free. Upload your addresses, choose your design, and you're done. No stress, no headaches. Honestly, we're all about protecting our mental well-being, especially around the holidays. And Minted is totally here to help with that. And here's a little mental health tip from us. Sometimes it's okay to delegate. And that is something I have to tell myself quite often if I'm being honest with you. Let Minted take care of your holiday cards this year so you can focus on what really matters, spending quality time with loved ones. Minted makes things easier with free recipient addressing. Printing all your loved ones' addresses on envelopes for free. Bring your traditions to life with independent art and designs this holiday season. Use code SQUEEZE for 20% off minted holiday cards and gifts. Is there anything that you've like learned through that process, either like about yourself or maybe like a mental health like tool or resource that you've like, oh, I need to like start doing this? Mm. Um through that time, I think one of the biggest lessons I learned was work-life balance Yeah, and how important it is. I had none at yeah. that time. I didn't realize that I didn't have life outside of the job Yeah, and, and why it's so important to, I was just all about, you know, the character and showing up and doing the best job that I could do. And I put way too much pressure on myself and I was living in such a heavy state for so long. I actually kind of went a little numb emotionally and I felt really drained and it, I kind of, it sent me into a bit of a, a spiral because as an actor, you need to show up and portray real emotions and you pull on your emotional life to do that. And as someone that wasn't feeling much of anything, I was like, how do I show up and do my job? Yeah. And so I think, you know, I think that this applies to everyone. I think it's not just like being a creative. I think especially in that field, you know, so much of your art is informed by your life. Um, but for anyone, you know, I think in order to show up and give your best, you also need to be like giving to yourself outside of, you know, the job. And so that was that was what I learned. I, I needed to pour into my cup in order to pour into the work because I was trying to pour from an empty cup and that yeah. just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a good, it's such a good reminder. Mm -hmm. I need that reminder like once a month. Yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so I, important. I know that. Oh, about I know. Myself. I know that you know that. Well, I realized like I, and this was a horrific epiphany for me, but I realized I had no hobbies. No hobbies. Me too. Yes. And yeah. I'm like, I got asked it in a podcast like maybe a month or two Were ago. Were you just like terrified? I was like, yeah. I what what do like, I do? I, I asked you, wait, were we together? Was it in press that we were doing? I think it was. Someone was like, what are your hobbies? And I literally looked at Taylor and I was like, <laughs> crickets. <laughs> what do I do? I was asked the same question <laughs> and I was horrified yeah. to realize that I could not come up with a singular thing. Wow. Nothing that I do just for myself. That's not for work. That's not yeah. for someone else. That's yeah. just for the pure enjoyment yeah. of it. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This is a huge problem. Yeah. I need to get a life. Yeah. For real. And so wow. 
it was a big mental shift for me coming out of that. And I really am like kind of in that time in my life now where I'm like really nourishing my home life and my personal life. And it makes me not only a better actor, um, but also like a better person, a better friend, a better daughter and sister. It's like yeah. bleeds into all areas of your life. So girl, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. That's we're so we're funny. working on our hobbies. Yeah. Did have you like figured out one that you I, I have two now. I have two. I'm really excited What's about your that. New ones? Okay. So I'm really excited to share this. Hopefully not nunchucks. Okay, no. <laughs> no. Um no, I have gotten into line dancing. <laughs> Wow. It's so fun. Yeah. I I I love it. Um it just brought me so much joy. Yeah. And I realized I could just show up and like yeah. just be me, just do my thing. And I it's not for any other reason other than the fact that it puts a smile on my face. Yeah. So funny. I yeah. love that. That and scrapbooking. That's my other hobby. Scrapbooking. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cute. I'm like so grandma, but I, I was love gonna that. Say. I love that. <laughs> That, no, I need to. I always say once we have kids, then I'll like get into scrapbooking. Oh yeah, you'll like, be all over it. Yeah, yeah. my mom, like my mom, did such cute ones. Yeah, my same. mom too. Yeah, that's where it came from. Yeah, my mom had like all this old, you know, arts and crafts stuff and yeah. like stickers and stationery. And I was like, wait, I could put this to good use. I can still see like the old scissors that my mom would have, and they would have like oh, the, the different, different edges. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> make it all so cute. But like the borders. scalloped edge yeah. or like your the mom weird. does scrapbooks. Why oh. did I just blank on that? Yeah. His mom does, does a scrapbook or did she? Every... She said she was going to stop and she didn't. Yeah. Did she not? Or last year? Did... I think we... every year for Christmas, she makes a scrapbook for me and my sister. It's just oh. the two of us. That's like the whole year. So oh. she takes like photos and, uh, you know, little random like things yeah. from our year. And yeah. makes this huge scrap scrapbook out of it. So That's sweet. like the 2022 scrapbook. And yeah. on Christmas um, Eve, she gives it to us. Yeah, it's like the scrapbook and pajamas. That's like That's yeah, so that the sweet. tradition. Yeah, she spends a lot of time on those scrapbooks. Oh my gosh, that's really yeah. special. I gotta step up my game. I'm slacking. Here. <laughs> yeah, so did you have an answer on that hobby? Or? Shush. <laughs> I'm working. We're on gonna it. find you one. I'm like, I'm annoying because like my gut reaction is to say like, is cleaning and organizing a hobby, <laughs> which it's not, but it is, but it's not, it can't, it can't be a hobby. Yeah. No, that's not I a like, hobby. I like no. strolling Target. <laughs> okay. You do like strolling Target? Love a yeah. Target. A target, target hates to see me come yep. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I could spend hours yeah. oh especially around the holidays yeah they bring out all the cute little decor yeah oh, it's yeah. very dangerous yeah dangerous Dan dangerous for the checkbook mm -hmm. yeah. what i think i like <laughs> no, I'm nothing's gonna like work yeah maybe just say you're gonna work on it i'm gonna work on it <laughs> i'm gonna work on it i'll report back on it and i'm gonna work okay it's time let's talk about dancing with the stars okay, okay. hallelujah i've been waiting <laughs> i've been waiting i also like have been I hope I remember because as we've been talking, I've been thinking of questions. For this? Yeah. Okay. I'm well, gonna, I, I, you, yeah, you start. You okay. can, I, I'm going to write down a couple. Before I want to know when you were first approached for it. Yeah. Did you ever have any hesitation or was it an automatic? Like, yeah, absolutely. Oh, it was automatic. Okay. I knew immediately. Okay. <laughs> it was always a dream of mine growing up. Was it? Yeah. I like loved watching it with the whole family. We would gather around the TV. I was... I think I was five when the show premiered. Okay. Um, so I was, I just remember like being really young and watching all these elaborate dance numbers. I was like, I want to do that one day. And wow. then forgot about it and then got to a point in my career where, where I was like, wait, this could actually be a real thing. And then it just, the stars aligned. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was really special. How has it been different to what you imagined it would be like? Uh, it's more intense. It's, more. <laughs> it's way more intense than I thought. Yeah. Um, just like the schedule, and the schedule, no days off. Um, which is fine. I, I think people actually do take days off. I think I just don't. I need to start asking around. You like, know. Are you guys taking days off? <laughs> I, I might just be the only one that's like right? in the studio every day. Um, but yeah, it's more intense not only physically the demands on your body, but also mentally and emotionally. Yeah. Like I, with every passing week with, with the eliminations, my 
stomach just Oof. turns into a knot, especially last night. I really, I was really, really, really concerned actually. Yeah. I, you have no idea. And also the competition is so stiff. You see these like four way ties every week yeah. because everybody is so good. And so, um, yeah, I've really, I think my strategy has just been like going in with no expectations and like taking it as it comes and like letting it be what it is and just like radical acceptance. That's what I've been yeah. trying to practice through this entire process. Cause it's, it's also unexpected. There's so many twists and turns. And so I'm just like trying to stay open. Yeah. Yeah. How has it been like learning ballroom styles? Because I don't think a lot of people realize truly like how different that is like even if you do like if you did grow up dancing like yeah. ballroom is literally like another language it's own. its own beast um yes i did dance when i was younger and that has helped me in some areas i i like to say it's given me tools yeah. um that like i when i walk into the rehearsal space i'm equipped with yeah. you know being able to pick up choreography understanding how to count music which helps a lot um but you know that there's not a whole lot more that translates. Yeah. In fact, the first couple of weeks of like being on the show, I've had to unlearn a lot because my natural instinct is just actually wrong. It's like yeah. the opposite of what I should be doing. Um, you know, ballroom, you're also dancing with another person. That is the biggest game of trust ever. Mm. Um, you know, you're not only trusting someone like physically, but also like the mental challenge of like, oh, so like if I jump into your arms, are you going to drop me or yeah. <laughs> like, will you be there? Um, and so that's a big, that's been one of my like biggest challenges, I think, um, especially in the first couple of weeks, a note that we would get is like the partnership, you yeah. know, I always want to lead. Mm. but I have to follow. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's as simple as like, you know, if Brandon takes my hand and like turns me a certain way, like I have to wait for his lead before mm. I can like mm. move in that direction. Um, I love to do my own thing. <laughs> Strong, independent woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just, it's a lot of, it's very specific. It's yeah. very specific. And also it's very scientific. Like there's a lot of physics to ballroom that I didn't realize, you know, like the way you hold your head and like the, the posture and the frame, it's all so that you can like cut through the air as fast as possible and as wow. seamless. And like the way that you hold your hand when you're turning, it's like close to your head because you can actually like do complete like one full rotation faster versus like if your arm is up, it throws your balance. And so I'm learning so much and I love to oh, learn. If yeah. you couldn't tell, yeah. <laughs> I'm like a constant student. So, um, <laughs> I've been enjoying like all of the intricacies of ballroom. Yeah. How has, um, Brandon been as a partner? He's amazing. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I love getting to work with him. I think there's a magic to like how they pair everyone up and, yeah. you know, I think our partnership is no different. He's very, um, he pushes me very hard, which I appreciate because I always want to be the best version of myself um, on the floor and off. And um, and he believes in me sometimes more than I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. I think I get very um, anxious. <laughs> I, I can get very anxious. Um, and with the outside noise and online opinions and even what the judges have to say and um, – he has been, he's been a rock. He also like feels a lot too. And I think that he could talk more about that. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's something that he's learning from me because um, he does, I think, put a lot of pressure on himself to like be cool, calm and collected. And right. he is a lot of the time, but also yeah. like at this point, this is the furthest that he's gone in the competition ever. Mm. Um, and I know he feels a lot of that pressure as well. And so it's nice because we can share the load of that together. And yeah. I think yeah. that's like the core of the partnership, you know? That's so sweet. What yeah. year is this for him? This is his seventh season. Seventh? Yeah. As a pro? As a pro, yeah. Oh, wow. And this is the furthest he's gone? Yeah. Oh my yes. gosh. Yes, I know. I know. Wow. It's a big deal. And I'm really excited about it because he deserves it so much. He works yeah. so hard and 
going back to our partnership, like we work so well together because we both are hungry. Like yeah. he's hungry because he wants it, yeah. you know, like he wants to be able to do a freestyle like in the finale and he should. He's an incredible, incredible choreographer. Yeah. He is like so ambitious. And I think every time he steps into the rehearsal space, he's like wanting to try things and experiment and like get the best, best, best version of the thing. So that's been a lot of our journey, like just workshopping like even this last dance halloween night people do not know this and i will say it we changed half the dance the night before camera blocking what yeah so typically your dance is locked in by thursday camera blocking is monday so we sunday night we changed the entire middle section of the dance and then i walked in monday camera blocked it still didn't know what i was doing we had to schedule an extra rehearsal so we could like catch up yeah and then performed it Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. So, but that's, that just speaks to like our standard for ourselves because, you know, beyond the scores, beyond outside opinion, like we want to be proud of what we do at the end of the day. So yeah. was that just because you guys didn't feel like it was as good as you We thought could that give? it could be better. Yeah. We thought that it could be better. Wow. But it's risky to like change yes, things that late in the game. Um, Dang. Yeah. But. Well, you couldn't tell. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. If you were inside my brain, you would definitely yeah. know. It was a bunch of like mini Chandlers just like running around. There were things on fire, like searching through file cabinets. Yeah. Like, what's the step? What is it? <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope we on the outside, it looked really great. Yeah, well. <laughs> for sure. I wonder if people, and this is not a question for you. I wonder if people ever like get paired together and they just can't stand each other. Cause for the oh, most part it, it does. <laughs> I'll okay. say that. that okay. Happens. Okay. I don't think on our season though. Okay. But yeah, I've heard stories. You've heard stories. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that would be tough. I would imagine with the amount of yeah. time you have to spend and yeah. like the connection you have to have. Yes. If you just can't stand your partner. <laughs> it's yeah. I, yeah, I can only imagine Brandon is the only person that I've spent every day with in the last two months. He's yeah. the only person I've seen every single day yeah. <laughs> without fault. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's funny. We're so like sibling, like he's so big brother. And with that, we like bicker like siblings. And do you? We, but yeah, we do. We oh, do. Um, which we haven't talked much about. Um, where I was like, yes, it's so great. Yeah. <laughs> it is great. Um, but I think there's just like, that's bound to happen. You know, like I think also we, we have high expectations of ourselves and each other. Yeah. And it's this weird power dynamic where it's like, you are so dependent on each other. And so, um, yeah, we're always kind of like pushing for the best. And yeah. with that push comes a little like, yeah, push with each other, yeah. Yeah. but it's always for the best. And yeah, it's like a, it's a collaborative space. Yes. So like you gotta, yes. you gotta have that. Yeah. To, like be able to grow yeah. and stuff. But yeah. I like wouldn't trade our partnership for the world. He's the best. That's yeah. awesome. He's I love that. That's so sweet. Yeah. Um, I do have a question because we were talking about this and um, I'm curious, like your feelings on it, but a lot of the people, all of the people, everyone, I don't know what you're going to say. Of them. So. <laughs> all of the celebrities have like play themselves. Like they are famous because like they are themselves. Yes. And this is like the first time that you are quote unquote playing yourself. Yes. How, how has that been? Like, do you feel like you've been like not questioning who you are, but like trying to find a sense of self throughout this? A hundred and ten percent. Yes. Everyone's, I, I don't even know what to call it. I'll just say like rise to fame, you yeah. know, has been as themselves, you know, like the athletes, like Danny and Dwight and Alona and Steven, like they're yeah. all known as themselves. Phaedra, she's a reality TV star. Um, you know, we had Shout out to Mr. Eric and Mr. Reggie, mm -hmm. our kings, um, <laughs> who got, went too soon. Um, I love them. But they, they were the only other actors on the season. Um, mm -hmm. And they went like in the second, third week. And so by like third, fourth week, I'm like kind of looking around and just feeling a difference, I think, in approach to the process. Yeah. When I first signed on to do the show, I thought, yeah, like I have existed in front of cameras my whole life. Like that's not a problem. Yeah. But I didn't realize that this is reality TV. I knew that intellectually. I just didn't yeah. really like internalize it and what that would mean for me. And I think everyone 
knows me as the characters that I play and any yeah. press that I've done has been around the work that I've done. Um, I'm not even really big on the social medias, yeah. <laughs> but the way I said that was really <laughs> exposing of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the social medias. <laughs> you know, the oh different my channels. gosh. Don't take my Gen Z card away. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, That's funny. And so, yeah, people don't like know me and so I think in that way I felt maybe a little behind um just in like the approach to this and like not bringing other character stories to lives but like bringing my story to life and being vulnerable about me and who I am and so definitely a weird like I think conflict with like sense of self and like trying to navigate how much I want to share and like how much I want to keep to myself. Like I generally am a pretty private person, but I also like want to have, give something that people can connect with, Yeah, you know? Um, but it is a, just a very like scary thing to like put yourself up for like judgment like that. And I commend anyone that has done that and who does that. And I'm learning a lot though through it. And I've also, I think, felt pressure um, as well because obviously everyone now online is not commenting on characters or whatever. They're commenting yeah. on me and, and my character and my yeah. who I am. And I think um, there's been – there was kind of a narrative online that like I think people felt like this was very easy for me. And I think part of that – I I do work really hard and I wish that the packages showed more of the struggles that I have in rehearsal because Brandon and I have had hours worth at this point of conversation about my self-doubt and my struggle with perfectionism and and sense of self and all of these things that and how they pertain to this show and yeah you just don't see that stuff as much um so that's hard and I think also I am such a like perpetually positive person. Like I always just look at the bright side. Yeah. Every time I sit down to do those interviews, like I will put in, like I have an optimistic outlook on everything. So even if I'm in the struggle, I'm like, but I'm going to get up and do it anyway, because that's what I'm here to do. And I think, I think I need to allow myself to sit in the struggle a little bit more so people can get to see that side of me. Cause I think I, yeah, like anyone, you know, you have a tendency to like tuck those away. You don't want people to see when you're struggling. And I think that's a larger conversation about the way that I operate in life. I don't even always show the struggle to the people that are close to me. So yeah, to have the expectation to show it to millions of people <laughs> around yeah. America is like, yeah, it's just been um, a big learning curve for me. Yeah. yeah. How are you so self-aware? It's shocking <laughs> to me. Like I like Yeah, thank you. I, like you're just so impressive. Like mm-hmm. everything you say in the way that like you see and address like I you're just like the most self-aware person. It's like Thanks. incredible. <laughs> well, my mom has a master's in clinical psychology. Okay. <laughs> she helps. was going for her doctorate. She worked as a therapist therapist for a really, really long time. She worked in drug and al- alcohol rehabilitation. So like she's seen a lot. Yeah. Um, the only reason why she doesn't have her doctorate is because I popped out the womb and was like, I'm going to be an yeah. actor. And so that kind of, she gave up her career for mine. Um, wow. And I love her. She's amazing. Yeah. I mm-hmm. hope you guys get to meet her one day. She's the best. Um, but she, uh, I like to say I kind of, I grew up with talk therapy just by the way that she operates yeah, and has taught me from a really young age to like look at things and like sit with myself. And like, if I'm having a feeling being able to identify it and then trace it back to its root. And so that's, those are, you know, skills that I started developing from a really, really young age. And I'm so grateful because it's a crazy world out here. And so I, I, I was learning how to do those things before I even realized what they were. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I credit my mom. That She's makes awesome. perfect sense. She's awesome. That, that <laughs> that's so sweet. Yeah, that's but thank awesome. you for saying no, that. Of I appreciate that. Um, how can people 
vote for you because oh like, let's talk about it we got you gotta <laughs> vote we gotta vote <laughs> um well on tuesdays you can text Chandler to 21523 10 times ten until times. you get that little text that says you've you've exceeded the voting limit. Okay. Then just send one more for good measure. <laughs> just, just make, just make just sure it was be 10. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then online, um, I don't know what that website is, but I always just type in DWTS vote and it comes up. Great. On ABC. Um, we'll like put yeah. a little banner here. Yeah, yeah. a little banner. Yeah. But um but all the support is so immensely appreciated so thank you mm, well yeah. we are rooting for you Thanks, we guys. will be voting 10 20 20 times D 20 times total yes, yes. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. I had to count how many hands we had. <laughs> you guys have 20, 20 <laughs> fingers together. 20. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll be we'll be watching you every week. And Thank you. Hoping, um, you know, more importantly than your dancing and everything, you just are staying, you know, mentally good. And yeah, because I know it's 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 a lot. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be rooting for you. In well, that honestly, sense as well. thank you. Even getting to sit here and like voice it with you guys a lot of things that i actually haven't even really said out loud to myself has been um mm -hmm. a lot i do want to remind very you very helpful to me you did say you were okay when we started this and at the end of this interview you were like i need to work on <laughs> saying like how i'm actually feeling so yeah. i think you are working on it i think you are getting better at it without thank knowing you. So thank you thanks thank for, you thanks for joining us thank you so much